St Andrews Park, one of the city's classic Victorian neighbourhood parks, laid out at the same time as the prosperous housing development around it. The trees of St Andrews Park. Did you know the park has two ginkgo trees? This species is identical to fossil trees that lived along with dinosaurs 200 million years ago. 27 small leafed limes. Herbal tea can be made from lime tree flowers. Eight common yew trees. Their leaves and seeds are poisonous. Four beech trees. A heavy crop of beech nuts, mast, usually follows from a hot summer the previous year. There are around 170 mature trees in St Andrews Park, including 35 different species. The 35 European or Austrian black pines, Pinus nigra, are the most conspicuous and easiest species to identify. These conifers are mainly located around the periphery of the park. They have evergreen leaves in the form of thin needles and develop their seeds within a cone. In late summer and early autumn, the cones are shed and these can be found in large numbers below the trees. The grey squirrels must find the pine seeds a welcome addition to their diet. In May, the pines appear to be covered in whitish candles. These are the newly expanding buds. There are 25 small-leaved lime trees, Tilia cordata. In the past, they have been pollarded, causing their trunks to radiate out into several smaller main branches. These limes form shady avenues along two paths leading to the centre of the park, one starting from the corner of Melita and Somerville Road and the other from the corner of Leopold and Morris Road. The largest and perhaps oldest tree is located near the centre of the park, a huge specimen of a hybrid variety of the black poplar, Populus nigra, plantiarensis, similar in appearance to the form known as the Lombardy poplar. This particular tree has an extraordinary deeply buttressed lower trunk. The London plains, Platanus hispanica, are among the largest trees in the park. Probably the easiest way to identify them is to look for the patchy, coloured, scaly appearance of the trunk. This is caused by the annual shedding of large flakes of bark. In May and June, the dangling balls of separate male and female flowers develop. The female ones go on to develop globular seed bundles, which in winter become very conspicuous bobbles hanging from the branches. Goldfinches and greenfinches can often be seen feeding on these. An unusual tree, rarely planted in this country, can be seen in the wildflower meadow area. This West Himalayan birch, Betula utilis var jacimonti, has the whitest bark of all birch species and was used in ancient times in India for writing Sanskrit texts. The bark has many modern uses, including packaging butter, making umbrella covers and bandages. In spring, the various species of cherry, prunus, give a series of spectacular flowering displays that start in February or early March with the cherry plum or mirobalan, followed in April by several varieties of flowering cherries. As these start to fade, the six bird cherries begin their extravagant flowering, producing huge numbers of heavily scented white flowers. All photographs are by Simon Randolph. Many more photographs and further information about the park's trees can be found on the Friends of St Andrews Park website, www.friendsofstandrewspark.com. St Andrews Park. Follow the trail to learn about the history, the wildlife and the birds of the park. Look out for the other five notice boards.